Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to get data from your Excel file into a new table in an Oracle database using Oracle SQL Developer. Just to show you this is real data. I've got my 8,000 or so rows here. And to build that I simply queried an existing table in Oracle and used the built-in export feature to build that file in SQL Developer. Now what I want to do is take the data from that Excel file or that CSV or that delimited text, whatever common uh, inputs you have, but basically delimited text or Excel will work. It's the same process. You want to right click in SQL Developer on an Oracle connection and for the schema you want to import it too. So I'm logged in as the HR user so I'm going to right click on the tables node for HR so I'm right clicking right here and I'm going to say import data so SQL Developer will automatically default to the last CSV or Excel you built um, using the export wizard I mean you can browse to whatever you want and it'll give you a preview window here. Now what the preview window does, and this is very important, it's how many rows do we want to read in this file to be able to give you accurate predictions um, for how the import is going to go. So I'm just going to go back to this file. Alright, so it's set to a thousand, let's set this to, I'm sorry, to a hundred, let's set this to five hundred. Now throughout this wizard I'm going to want to be able to browse the data to answer these questions and the nice thing is I don't have to keep doing this. That's, that's annoying. So what we have in the wizard is the preview window of data available to you inside the wizard itself. So I need to give the table a new name. Let's call this um, YouTube Excel import. Now I can say let's just import 10 rows or 100 rows or 5 rows. I'm going to say import all the rows so I'm not going to check this box. And we have a couple of different uh, ways to get the data into the database. So for CSV files you have the most flexibility. The default is to say just inside the session itself read the data from the file and insert it into the table. Insert script says do the same work but instead of actually doing the work write the SQL that we use to do the work to a file that you can then run yourself later via SQL Plus or SQL Developer. External table um, so for very large uh, input files let's say you've got a billion rows or a million rows or even 900,000 rows in an Excel file or in this case in a CSV if you can stage those files on the database server itself you can create what's called an external table which is able to uh, read the data um, in the database from on the file system directly uh, that's kind of an advanced concept uh, similar to that but on, from the client perspective is you can create a SQL loader um, scenario so SQL loader is one of the programs in your Oracle home if you've installed an Oracle home on your machine in the same directory you'd see SQL plus Again, ideal for very, very, very large um, CSV files. We can set up um, a script for you to load those very quickly into your database. But I've got 10,000 rows here. This should run swimmingly for the insert. And all I would say is if you've got very large uh, files that you want to import, you might want to take the time to investigate these other methods. All right, let's get going. So. The first thing it's going to say, well, what columns from the CSV or Excel do you want to bring in? And I want to bring in all of them. And now we need to uh, define the columns in the Oracle table that we're going to create to house the data from this file. Now, we do try to protect you somewhat when you're choosing column names. So if I used a reserved word like table, and saying, look, you've got a problem with this definition. 
and down here it's saying that column name isn't valid. So we do have a couple of client side checks to kind of protect you. And it's not uncommon to have like spaces um, in a column name in an Excel file. Like if I had um, this name, that's not valid. But this underscore name is. And I'm just going to call this owner. I'm just going to actually leave the default names um, from the input stream. What I need to pay, what I need to pay more attention to uh, is the data type and the definitions for the columns themselves, not just the names. So I had that preview uh, window set to 500, I think. Yep. So reading 500 uh, values out of um, the 8,000 in this file. We have a couple of suggestions for you in terms of defining how many characters do we want to define this column in the table. The minimum number that we found is 18 based on that 500. And then we've given you maybe a reasonable uh, middle ground and then of course the max you can define for a Veracare 2 which is 4,000. I'm not sure what the max size here is. I don't have a data model. Um, I'm going to guess that the largest this is going to be is 30. If you want to know for sure if this is going to fit or not, go back and set that preview window to the number of rows, and then the tool will be able to check it as you go. If you accidentally come here and set it to too low, it sees in the preview window immediately that that's too low. It'll show you. So it looks like 30. I'm good to go on this one. Object name, again, it's saying it looks like the max that we see in here is 30. I'm going to leave that to 30. Actually, let's bump that up. Let's make that, I don't know, a 1,000. Object ID, we've got this set to a number. And it doesn't look like there's anything requiring more precision than that. And scale is zero. There's no uh, decimal points to worry about. You could also use an ANSI type like integer. That's completely compatible in Oracle. Um, let's look at a couple of the other um, items on these column definitions. We have this thing called nullable, default, and comment. Comment is a nice thing you can do. So in the database itself, you can document what these columns are used for. And this is the primary key or um, unique value for this record. So when I'm going and browsing this table later, if I want to know what object ID is as I've created the table, there's a nice comment there to remind me and others that come in after me. Nullable, I don't want this value to be able to be null. I, I need it to define um, the uniqueness or what sets this record apart from the others. And default, this is just saying, look, if someone tries to insert something without a value, we can try a default value. And that doesn't make sense for object ID. Owner, I don't want to be nullable. Object name, I don't want it to be nullable. And just to make this video fast, I'm not going to provide uh, comments for these. So again, for object type, it's saying the minimum could be 12. We suggest maybe 26, or you could go to the max. Let's try to use the suggestion. All right, so these are the fun ones. So these are strings um, at the moment. And in a CSV or an Excel file, it's just stored as a string. But in the database, I want this to be stored as a date or maybe a timestamp. Um, and using the proper data type, I get much better performance and much better um, access to SQL features. I can use all of the date functions um, against the data when querying it. I don't have to convert it to a date first. So I want to store this as a date in the database. So I'm going to change this to date. Now in Oracle, a date is both the time and the day. Now we've tried to guess what the date format is. So we have to reconcile this string to an actual date in the database. And we have a few common formats here. Now if I choose one that's not compatible, these light up with the warning messages. They're like, look, saying um, two uh, values for the date followed by a dash and then a three um, character um, abbreviation for the month and then two um, digits for the year, 
these values don't reconcile to that so we're not going to be able to successfully insert this as a date the nice thing is this is the developer has gone through these values and it's trying to guess what a valid value might be and in this case the gate the guess was correct so DD mon year 24 hour um, time format followed by minutes followed by seconds um, if we can't guess this correct you're gonna have to input this value yourself which you can totally do um, I could say dd mon y y y y 24h h minute second now I've still got a problem because I'm saying the separators here are decimals instead of dashes so I've got to basically experiment with this until I get it right there it is again so uh, I just need to do this again for the last column so I'm going to change this from ver care to date I can't stress enough how important it is to store dates as dates I am going to give comments on these columns. All right, so you just might want to review again your settings here. Make sure you get the column names right, the data types right. You can change names and data types after the fact. Depending on the change, it can be quite hard. It's best just to get it right the first time. And of course, if we're too narrow, on any of these definitions, there will be rows that don't go into the um, to the table. The insert will not fit, will not complete successfully. All right. So here I'm on my summary page. It's just reminding us what we're doing. We're creating a new table. These are the field names. Here's the method in which we're doing the insert. and we're going to click finish and we can see it spool through all of the records there alright so we were mostly successful insert failed for row 7451 through 7500 the value was too large so see the owner was 32 I guess the max was 30 do I want to ignore these errors so I'm going to say yes which just means continue on and then we're done all right, so this is very nice. There's a log of what happened. So we created a table called YouTube Excel import. We can see my comments there. These are the ones that failed. And if we spool over, we can see the, um, the object type or the object owner. Something in there was longer than um, 32 owner was larger than 32. So let's go find this table. I can use the keyboard to navigate this list. If I double click it'll open the table. I can click on the data page and see the records. I can right click and say row count. So I got 8157, almost all the records. I can come in here and change this. Like I said, some of these time, some of these tables, some of these settings you can change. So let's uh, let's just edit the table. So this isn't going to edit the data in the table. This is going to edit the definition of the table. We're going to bump this up to 50. Now, if we had made that smaller, we'd have data loss that that's going to be a hard change making it bigger generally not an issue so I'm going to associate this file with the connection and then I can just run the script to try to reinsert these rows that failed let's see how this goes so uh, everything's commented out except for the inserts themselves so I can hit F5 or click this button bang we're all good now I just need to commit the work for my session I can come back over here, do the row count again, and I've got the number of rows that I expect, 8204.
Now, if you're going to be doing this operation a lot, just an advanced tip and trick for you. Once the table's been uh, created, you want to dump more data into it. Instead of right-clicking on the tables node, you right-click on the table itself and you say import data. See this button here that says restore state? We can go through this scenario. Set everything up. And right here I can click save state. YouTube import scenario, say save. I'm going to exit this wizard. I'm going to do import again. And now, instead of going through this wizard, I'm going to say restore state and say YouTube import scenario. And now everything's been finished for me. And I can go directly to the end and everything's good to go and I can just run it. So if you find yourself going through these wizards over and over again and making little tweaks, use the save and load state buttons. Thanks for your time everyone. Uh, enjoy your Oracle experience and Oracle SQL Developer. Uh, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss new videos as they're posted and you can follow me online as that Jeff Smith. And if you're not the type that learns by watching videos, if you're more of a reader, I have a blog, thatjeffsmith.com. The number one post, six years running, step by step, how to import from Excel to an Oracle table. So everything I just showed you in long form, complete with pictures. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.